Okay, so let's jump into part two of the difference quotient. And we're gonna focus on the probably the two algebraically hardest to simplify examples. So to get started, let's look at our first example. And we're gonna compute the difference quotient for the function f of x equals square root of two x minus one. So I'm gonna remind you guys the general formula for the difference quotient. So this is general without, it's not specific to any function, just the general formula is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Okay, so this is the general formula. And this is the kind of formula that hopefully with enough practice, you'd have this just general formula memorized. Now we're going to actually customize with this particular example, what is the difference quotient for this function? So let's compute each piece of the formula that needs to be computed. So we'll compute the f of x plus h, and we'll compute the f of x we really already have computed, but we'll just kind of color code them. So f of x plus h, we'll color code that with red, would be square root of two times x plus h minus one. And simplifying that, we get two x plus 2h minus 1. Okay, now let's take a look at the f of x. We already have that piece done. It's given to us. So now we're ready to go ahead and substitute into our difference quotient formula. So square root of 2x plus 2h minus 1 and then subtract f of x all over h. Okay, and just let's make a note that this is unsimplified. So we're about halfway there. Remember that the end goal of this is to have no division by zero when we substitute an h equals zero. So the goal would be that we want to have something where I can ultimately plug in h equals zero, and you'll be doing this in calculus. It'll be the first concept that you guys learn called a derivative. You'll learn how that's related to the difference quotient and why you might want to substitute h equals zero in. Um, but for now, we're just kind of working on the algebra piece. So this is the unsimplified version. Now to simplify, we want to cancel an h, but with all these square roots in the numerator, we certainly can't do that. So the only way to simplify a square root, and this is just going to be true for all square roots, is that we have to multiply by the conjugate. Okay, so to multiply by the conjugate, what that's going to translate to is we're going to conjugate this minus into a plus. We're going to multiply by root of 2x plus 2h minus 1 plus root 2x minus 1 over the same thing. We're only allowed to multiply a fraction by 1 so that we don't actually change its value. We just change how it appears. Okay, now before we go to all the work to FOIL this out, in my first video, I kind of explained that you can treat this as any sort of FOIL problem but that there is a shortcut. So now I'm gonna assume that you've seen that first video, you've seen that when you FOIL, um, first outside, inside, last, we have what's called a difference of squares. So a difference of squares is using the fact that when you have something that's like a minus b, and you times it by something that is a plus b, the result you will get is a squared minus b squared. So remembering that identity and considering that this is a minus b and this is times a plus b, um, I can just jump to a squared minus b squared. So let's do the a squared part first. a squared would be 2x plus 2h minus 1, because when you square a square root, you'll just get what's inside. Now, taking away all of v, um, b squared would be 2x minus 1. And remember, this is all over h times the conjugate, and you don't need to do anything to simplify that denominator because 
Remember, we're going to end up canceling that H anyway in the end, that factor of H, so no need to distribute it at this point. Okay, now let's clean up the numerator, and hopefully we're going to see how to cancel the factor of H. So I see a 2x minus a 2x, so these cancel, and I see a negative 1 minus a negative 1, so those cancel. That leaves me with a numerator of 2h, and if you look, see how there's that factor of h top and bottom? So I have a factor of h in the numerator and denominator, they cancel, leaving me with 2 in the numerator and the conjugate. in the denominator. Okay, now the more and more you guys practice this, you're going to notice that yes, there are patterns. Um, don't try and anticipate the last step from the first step because as your value inside the square root gets more complicated, this process is going to give you something slightly unpredictable for the numerator. So while the process of multiplying by the conjugate will be the same every single time, it's not necessarily the case that we can just immediately know what um, the final step will, will be without getting there doing algebra. So this is our final difference quotient because I can go ahead and evaluate this expression for h equals zero. Now let's go ahead and move on to example two. We did a square root. Let's go ahead and do A rational function. Okay, so this rational function, I made one a little bit harder because you have x as a numerator and denominator, and I don't think your homework problem features um, many, if any, of those, but still good to see an example or two before we get to calculus. So let's go ahead and do the f of x plus h will be 2x plus h over x plus h minus 1 which is 2x plus 2h over x plus h minus 1. And then f of x, we already have that formula. So we're going to plug into our general difference quotient formula, leaving me 2x plus 2h over x plus h minus 1. Take away f of x all over h. And looking at the denominator. Um, now we're dealing with fractions here. So I want to subtract the two fractions in the numerator as my first step of PEMDAS, which is the order of operations, but I'm noting that I can't do that because the denominators are different. So what I must do is instead I'll have to adjust each fraction by uh, multiplying by the missing factor to give me the lowest common denominator for these fractions. So I'll multiply the fraction with denominator x minus 1 times x plus h minus 1 and then I'll multiply the fraction that has x plus h minus 1 in the denominator by x minus 1. Okay, and again, multiplying each fraction by the same thing in the numerator and denominator so that I don't change fraction values. And that's going to leave me with 2x plus 2h times x minus 1 minus 2x times x plus h minus 1 all over x minus 1 times x plus h minus 1. And then remember we have an h that's in the denominator of the original fraction, but thanks to rules of fractions, when you have something like, let's say, a over b over c, that ends up being a over b times c. So I know that that h is going to end up being a factor in the denominator. Okay, so now all I need to do is simplify my numerator and hopefully identify what terms are going to cancel for me. So let's do the algebra to expand the first multiplication. We have 2x squared minus 2x plus 2hx minus 2h. Okay, and then from that we're going to take off so there's a minus, and we're subtracting all of these terms. We have minus 2x squared plus 2hx minus 2x. Okay, so I'm looking at canceling what I can from the numerator. 
I have 2x squared minus 2x squared. I have negative 2x minus 2x minus a negative 2x. And I have positive 2hx minus positive 2hx. So all the terms but the negative 2h cancel, leave me with h as a common factor in my numerator and denominator. So I'm going to get negative 2h over x minus 1 times x plus h minus 1. And there's our final difference quotient. Ah, oops, that h canceled from the numerator. There we go. That is our final difference quotient. So just a quick note before we end here, notice that the goal is not to have no h's in the denominator. Uh, the goal is to remove the factor of h from the denominator that would cause division by zero if you evaluated this expression at h equals zero. We can actually do a quick check to see what happens when I plug in h equals zero. Okay, we're doing fine. There's an x value that we don't know, plus zero minus one, so I get negative two over x minus one squared. Okay, notice that that is an, a valid expression, which means that we have simplified the problem of the difference quotient, division by zero, we've simplified it away. So that's all we need to be able to do for calculus, basically. Hopefully this part two video was helpful, and if you haven't already checked out part one, I recommend checking out part one on the difference quotient. See you guys next time.